my gorgeously multi weirdly ethnic looking face on screen then we're gonna get right down to business so thank you in advance for tuning in I appreciate everybody for being here I am going to go ahead now and kick the image on for twitch we're live on YouTube live on twitch glad to have everybody here let me turn this music down in my eardrums just a taste just a taste all right now I should be able to track how many people are here from this camera, we can track how many people are here from the main screen here. And I think we're in good shape, friends. Like I said, for those of you who are just tuning in, in the comment section on YouTube, in the chat on Twitch, be sure to check out my podcast. I put a link to the uh, Apple podcast in there. If you are an Android person, no worries. Definitely want to go to Google Play. If you're a Spotify person, Hopefully that one's up to date. They say that one takes about a week. I think I should be on Amazon Alexa as of today, according to the message I got from Amazon. We are up on Amazon. Uh, where else are we? We're on uh, TuneIn, which I think is the Amazon platform. But the bottom line and why I'm telling you this before we get into the discussion at large is for YouTube especially, the podcast... Uh, is what's really gonna take the place of a lot of my YouTube content that I used to do. All right, so uh, I've done a couple of live streams on YouTube, just doing my best to try to let all of you know. Uh, I know a ton of people have been unsubscribing and that's totally fine because they got the message. <clears throat> but that we're, I'm, I'm not never gonna make YouTube content again. That's not, that's not the move. It's just that right now, our best move uh, is making content on the, the podcast then having content on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, uh, and then a little bit of content here on Twitch. All right. So if you got anything good out of what I used to do on YouTube, you're going to get 10 times that and more on the podcast. I promise you that because the podcast allows me to do what I <laughs> really what I'm best at, which is to communicate and to help people with leadership issues, right? And mindset issues, something that doesn't always come across the way I want it to in a video. All right. One day in the future, I hope to get back to doing YouTube videos, and I believe we will. Uh, we just need some other pieces in place to make that work. And, and we're, we're kind of brainstorming what YouTube content would look like in the future, because it's pretty much been proven that what we would like to create, there, there's a gap between what we'd like to create and what you all want to watch, and more importantly, what YouTube will actually show you. So. <clears throat> no beef, no resentment, all good. Just want to make you all aware that if you're getting anything good out of the 69 Pillars, which by the 69 Pillars uh, coaching program will be on my podcast at some point. I'm going to upload all of them. They're going to become uh, you know, basically 70 days because it's 70 videos. It, it was 69 when we started and then it became 70. Uh, but I just never changed the branding. But <clears throat> those are going to be uploaded either as a separate podcast or on the current podcast. I haven't decided. Maybe you all can give me some input. Would you rather have the 69 Pillars as a separate thing that you can just go to and not have it get inundated on my podcast by everything else? I don't know. Love to hear from you on that, but thank you very much. Melanie G says, been binge listening to the podcast. I love feeling like I'm right there going on walks with you and Miko. Thank you both for sharing. Oh, man, thank you so much for listening. That is a blessing to hear. It's even more of a blessing to hear the way that you describe it because that's exactly what we were going for was we wanted you all to feel like you were a part of the conversation, that you were just outside with us. It's it's very much a conversation, not like a show. I never like doing scripted, like I don't like sitcoms, for example, right? So a lot of what works on YouTube, as an example, was always kind of off-putting to me because it, it's just not funny. Like most sitcoms are dumb. <laughs> they're not really that funny and so doing like a funny sketch so on youtube you know unless it's dave Chappelle, i'm not watching a sketch comedy show or portlandia right um but i wanted it to be way more natural and way more feel like you all are the third seat or the fourth seat or the fifth seat in this this group of people who are having conversations um so it's a blessing to hear melanie i'm so glad that that's the experience you're getting from it we got we're going to try to put up a new one every single day to serve you all, <clears throat> just to try to give you something good that you can use to, whether it's get encouragement, whether it's to get, you know, some knowledge that you don't already have. Uh, we really want to make the podcast a place where people can go to really learn how to make themselves the strongest version of themselves and then translate that into 
uh, a freelance career or possibly entrepreneurship. Because we, you know, I talked about that on the podcast today, where my wife was talking about working in a place. We were talking about crappy jobs, and she was <clears throat> she was talking about how the place where she was working wasn't paying her what she was worth. And then I immediately responded. I kind of cut her off like, dude, no job pays you what you're worth. That's the point. <laughs> I know that, well, not me, but a business knows that if it uses your output, it can make a certain amount of revenue. Now, it's willing to pay you a percentage of that revenue, but certainly nowhere near what the business is going to make from you, right? So I'm encouraging a lot more people to go out and start, even if you don't want to start a business, Start a freelancing gig where you get to work on your own terms and you get to set your price based on value. Uh, and I, I often recommend to people not to work hourly, which will be hard. Like if you're trying to work somewhere like Upwork or something, you have to put an hourly rate. I think that's silly. I think the era of hourly wages, it should have been dead 10, 15 years ago, but it's not because people, you know, first of all, the... The contracting world will never want to get out of that because it's just easy to build a customer a perceived amount of value. Oh, we spent 40 hours on this. Yeah, but if you suck at what you do, look how much time you put into it. That's one of the things I actually really like about YouTube is it doesn't matter how much time you put in. You hit or you sit. You make a hit or YouTube's not showing it to people. They don't care because I would hear creators that I used to talk to on my other channel like, oh, man, I'm working so hard and so many hours like your audience on YouTube does not care how many hours you put into your work. They don't care, right? Only a world that still thinks we're making cogs and cars on assembly lines that aren't built by robots thinks time is an actual measure of value. It's ridiculous. It's ridiculous. Um, let's see. MJM says, haven't seen you in a while, man. Beard looking nice and healthy. Yeah, it's sexy, ain't it? It's luxurious. Thank you very much. Captain Cheese is here, not missing this one. What's up, Cheese? Good to see you, man. Uh, and so I am broadcasting on YouTube and on Twitch. If you guys hear me calling out names, you're like, who the heck is Cheese? Or who is MJM? It's We're on two different platforms. But again, I cannot recommend it. And I keep pitching it. I keep saying it. It's not. I'm not trying to sell you on it. I just, I've been in the game a long time, friends. And a lot of the things that I'm going to share with you on my podcast are a lot of the things you're going to pay somebody 500 to 1000 to 5000 to 10000 dollars to tell you in an online course. Why spend all that money when you could just come listen to someone teach you the stuff for, for, and take it from a person who's actually run part of a for, you know, run a part of a billionaire's portfolio business, right? Run one of his companies basically, right? I'm like, I cut my teeth not as an entrepreneur. I got started as a laborer. Like, I knew at 17 that I sh should be an entrepreneur, but I made some... I, I had issues with my head and that I didn't understand the value I brought to the table, so I played the safe route, right, when I probably shouldn't have. And that's a lot of things I try to help you guys with is to avoid my mistakes so you don't take as long to get to the dreams. If you just listen to what I'm saying, you'll do everything I can do or even greater, depending on what it is you're doing, and half the time it took me. It doesn't have to take you 15 years to figure it out. Saint Just Germany, thank you for the follow on Twitch. I really appreciate that. And shouts out to Blushing Cat and Shizumi1212 for the follow as well. And so I'm going to tell you guys the stuff that I learned running those companies. I'm going to tell you what I learned running my own company. Mistakes that every business owner makes when you first get started, right? Um, I'm going to be sharing a lot of this stuff. We talked today about how a crappy job can be beneficial versus all the internet content telling you to run away from your crappy job and come take my course so I can teach you how to start, you know, an Amazon selling business where you, in a month, you can be selling blah, blah, blah. And maybe you can, but what they don't tell you in the ad, and this ties into everything I'm going to talk to you about the title tonight. Don't, don't think I'm off on a tangent. This totally ties in to what I want to tell you all tonight or what the title of the videos are. Don't think for a second that the, the person selling you the average, the person selling you the ad is gonna show you the Ferrari in the background that they bought or leased or whatever with the money they're making on Amazon. They're not gonna tell you how much trial and error you're gonna have to put in, how much you're gonna have to understand quantifiable data, right? And how you're gonna have to have some base of capital to be able to experiment, right? Not a ton of money, but they're not going to tell you or like they'll tell you with this t-shirt business, I grew it and they don't, 
What they don't tell you in the ad is the amount of capital it could potentially take to get a t-shirt business off the ground. If you don't have somebody infusing your company with capital so that you can experiment with markets to understand what they will wear and what they will buy, <clears throat> they're not going to say that in the ad. The ad's just going to promise you the Lamborghini and the, the person parked out in front of the private jet. I still love the story that allegedly there were, <laughs> there were these dudes hopping. It's totally dudes. I, I can't imagine a woman doing this foolishness, but jumping a fence at an airport to stand in front of a private jet to take a picture. I don't know if that's true, but I heard that happen. Right? You could do that. Um, and by the way, I'm not hating on people selling courses. I sell a course. In fact, if, you've not, if you're on my mailing list and you haven't been paying attention to my emails because you're a millennial or just someone like my wife that doesn't, or not my wife, my mother-in-law who doesn't check email, you've been missing me saying... My coaching course was 70% off. Well, that ended yesterday, or it technically ended today at midnight because uh, I, I extended it another day because some people didn't get the word. But we officially launched our coaching program, and it went um, it went 70, went 70 from 70% off to full price, and people missed out. Right, so I'm not against people selling a course, but I want, I want to continue to get emails from people, and I get them fairly regularly. Let's say, dude, when I bought this course, I either didn't know what to expect, but man, you packed this thing full of life-changing value that I would have gladly paid X amount of dollars more for. And that's the, I want that to be my reputation, right? Not that you spent $1,000. By the way, it's not $1,000. It may be one day because we're going to keep adding value to it and we will raise the price again. But the point is <clears throat> I want to stick to my original, my original goal, which was to give away way more stuff than I ever charged for. Now, you could argue that what you're paying for is more valuable. Well, the reason why what you're paying for is more valuable, let me be really clear in what sets what I do apart from what you'll find out there in the rest of cyberspace. What I'm doing on the private side is very much tailored to you as a person. A lot of what I do here is generic because I don't you know, I'm I'm talking to a crowd. I don't know your problems, I don't know your goals, I don't know you as a person very well. Outside of some of you, you know, type your Myers Briggs type or whatever, or your Enneagram <clears throat> school uh, codes into the chat, but that doesn't tell me anything about your values, doesn't tell me anything about your motivations, that tells me nothing um, about what you're actually good at, right? So, in the private side, you're able to see me work with people, and I guarantee you, the amount of people we work with in these programs, you're going to hear someone else's story that's like yours, if not the exact same thing. You'd be like, oh, he gave her this advice because she wanted to start a nail salon, but instead of going out and borrowing money and going into debt to get a brick and mortar spot, he showed her how she could just build a simple website basically for free. Uh, not have to pay some company thousands of dollars to build your website, like, or just get a Facebook page if you don't have the money for a website, and then use the Facebook page to get leads for you to go to people's houses and do it for them. And that's probably more lucrative because I would much rather you come if you know if I didn't cut my own hair and trim my own beard, if I had a barber, I'd pay him to come here so I don't have to go to the freaking barber shop. Right. So the podcast, going back to what I was saying is about me making good on that that promise of I want to give away <clears throat> way more stuff than what anybody can pay for out there. Right? And a lot of it's going to come from not just my personal experience, but things that I've read. I mean, you could buy all the books on my shelf and read all of those too. Or you could just listen to a podcast where I'm going to tell it to you. Or at the very least on the podcast, I'll tell you what books to read so that you can narrow down what you're trying to do. Anyway, I can't cannot um stress enough and encourage all of you enough to go check it out i'm gonna put it in the chat one more time so if you're not an apple person don't worry you can go to google play i don't know how to post links from google play because i don't i don't have a google device that's probably why um <clears throat> it's on spotify it's on apple it's also on my website if you don't have either you can just go to brianchambers.com slash podcast and just run through the playlist right there on my website Raz says, just don't talk about today's episode too much. I haven't listened to it yet, but the animal attack was hilarious. <laughs> I knew people would dig the animal attack. Because we were laughing while we were filming, while we were recording that. Like, Basically, I know that if a zombie apocalypse goes down, my wife is pushing me in front of the zombies. 
And she swears, no, I wasn't pushing you. I was trying to push you so that we could run faster. I'm like, the reason why you had to push me is because I wasn't trying to run in the direction of the beast. If something's coming to eat us, my thing is I need to examine the dead body so I can figure out, do we need to run the other way? She's like, oh, it's trying to push you to run faster. I'm like, the monster wasn't behind us. It's in the woods. It's hilarious. Anyway, I'm spoiling it, but it's still funny to listen to. Uh, but yeah, so I, I will refrain from spoiling today's podcast episode about uh, how crappy jobs actually help you as an entrepreneur. You know, but that's what I mean. Like, you can watch other videos that tell you leave. Like, that's what I used to hate about network marketing uh, businesses. Like, you, you fire your boss and just like, dude, come on. They show you pictures of Hawaii. And I get it. I understand sales, friends. I'm not stupid. I get that you want to show people the reward, not show them the pain that they're going to have to go through to get the reward. But that's why you also have so many people fail. In the, like if, if there was a test at the end of most of these courses online that you had to like run a successful ad or if you actually had to show that you could do the things you were taught, I bet a lot of people would fail. And this coming, I'm taking a lot of these courses, right? Same thing with network marketing. When they show you the pictures of Hawaii, they don't show you the pain because that doesn't sell. If I got you in there and said, listen, you're going to work this like a full time. You're going to basically have two jobs when you start this. Right. And as a result, if you work hard enough, you'll make money. Are you going to buy from me if I say that? Or are you going to buy from me if I say, listen, it's this easy. All you got to do, tell your friends and family. That's their favorite thing. Tell your friends and family like your mom wants to join your little stupid program, uh, which by the way, what kills all network marketing businesses is 99% of them, at least the ones I've seen, the product sucks. I mean, sucks. It's bad. Right? So there's that. But the, uh, you know, they show, I remember I was sitting in one where the lady was showing pictures of Hawaii and you can make obscene, she used to mess up words, obscene amounts of money just by using our simple formula. I'm like, word? Like statistics show that 90 plus percent of people in these programs don't make a dime. In fact, they lose money. So who are the 10 of you that are going to Hawaii? Because it ain't most people. And sure, sales dictates that I don't lead with pain, that I lead with pleasure. But I don't know. Part of me would rather just do less sales and actually teach you how to do something that make like I'd rather get less people in my program because I didn't use that tactic of selling you some BS dream that's never going to happen without the pain and then just get the right people in the program who are willing to go through a little bit of pain like the people who aren't delusional that realize like if I have the audacity to have a dream I'm going to actually have to work for it and then they show up and then they get bombarded with Jesus these videos are I have to watch I had to watch this video four times just to capture everything because it was it was a lot of content right and so then when you, then you can go out like I have a person that just emailed me today who is in the music industry and now went out and got a mentor and is now starting to make progress and really you know is optimistic about their ability to succeed and they coupled what I was they coupled my private program with another one that they purchased that was really good too right and so they were telling me about how it was working out for them and I was really proud of this person I'd rather just get less people, but my reputation is people come through and actually go do something, not get millions of people who are just kind of like, yeah, it was nice, I learned a lot, but I didn't really do anything with it. And then they're right exactly where they started. You know, if nothing else, people that go through a lot of the stuff I'm talking about, at least your head's going to be screwed on better, right? And how am I qualified to help you do that? Because my head was not always screwed on right. And I work very hard every single day of my life to make it better. <clears throat> you know, so I'm, I'm not just the hair club president, I'm also a client. Right, anyway, welcome to the party, friends. Thanks for being here. Feel free to start flooding the chat with questions if you have them. What I have to say tonight is not very complicated, nor does it need to be very long-winded. This idea that there is something that you are doing consistently that if you're continually failing, 
Uh, is this the only thing that's causing it? No, but it's the root cause. Right? There, you could point to probably a hundred or a thousand different things that lead you to quote unquote failure. Right? And by failure, let me let me be clear about my semantics because I, I preach every every day. There's no such thing as failure, there's only progress. Well, there is failure if you're not making any progress, right? <laughs> That's the catch, is if you're in the same place and not making any way forward, <clears throat> it's not that you failed, it's that you are failing to do something properly to, to change that trajectory, right? And remember, like I said, uh, and I didn't say it, um, Jonathan, Dr. Jonathan Haidt said it, humans are at their happiest when they're making progress, when they're moving forward, right? So there's something very specific that if you don't address... I don't care how many courses you take. I don't care how smart you are. In fact, being smarter can actually be somewhat detrimental uh, because you can be intelligent but still have this problem. And when you're intelligent, it, like when I deal with intelligent people that have this problem, they're harder to deal with than someone who may be a little less book smart or a little less intelligent. They're harder to work with. A lot of times, really intelligent people are hard to coach right? because they think they know everything. And it's like, well, you don't really know anything until you've done something. Until you're living it is when you intimately know it. Right? That's why the Bible used to use the word knowing a husband or knowing a wife for sex. Because it's until that happens, you don't really know somebody until you are joined in that way. And then you know each other for real. All right, Just Dill says, have you ever had any experience with perfectionist behavior? Hell yeah. Good question. Um, so... The bottom line is, and I've talked about this before, but kind of in passing, I've never made it the subject. If you're continuing to see results that are different from the results that you actually want to get, you're trying to accomplish something in your life and it's just not going down the way you'd like it to, somewhere in the chain, so in my private coaching program, I teach a lesson called the five pillars of absolute success right there's five and it's a system it's not just five things that you have to know it's five things that you have to actually do <clears throat> right like for example the first pillar is self-awareness so if you looked at if you made it into like a diagram you'd have self-awareness is the foundation of success and i show you the five pillars of self-awareness in my free program in the private program i show you the five pillars of absolute success and one of those pillars is self-awareness which then makes you have to have all these five things at least running they don't have to be perfect but to fill this slot up here you need to be constantly working on these five things down here to fill up this one pillar and then you get to the second pillar the third the fourth and the fifth and each of those pillars is a step in a system and the system is cyclical so once you get to the end of the system where you know once you get to the end of the system is where you are getting um these results that you don't like, you have to understand how to use those results and run them back through the system to figure out where the broken down part is. But I can guarantee you, if you don't get this part right, no matter how many times you run it through the system, it's just not going to help because you're not going to have the perspective to see it. And it's very simple. It's what I call one dimensional thinking. All right? And I will give you some practical examples. I never like to do just philosophy. I like to do philosophy and then practical examples. Right? So if you struggle habitually with what I call one-dimensional thinking, which is a more polite way to say you are simple-minded, right? I'm not talking about dumb. There are, I know a lot of intelligent people who are simple-minded and they're harder to deal with than someone who's not that smart. Because at least the person who's not that smart, it's like they know it. It's like, yeah, it's fine. Uh, in fact, like I said, if you have high intelligence, this could actually be a bigger problem for you. And it's, if you have this one-dimensional thinking problem, it's going to affect all those pillars of success. First of all, it's going to throw off your self-awareness because you're going to think you know things about yourself and like Peter Drucker says, you're going to be wrong, right? Because another way to describe one-dimensional thinking is closed-minded thinking. And there's an old saying that says a closed mind, um, <clears throat> how do they describe it? A closed mind uh, is, is basically closed off to, to new ideas, things that can actually help the mind grow and get better. And so, to give you a practical example, look at, just go on Twitter and do a hashtag of some political thing that's going on and look at everyone yelling at each other. 
Now, if you would just think rationally for one second, just one second, I'm going to use a very specific example, okay? I'm going to use a person, uh, and hopefully she won't mind me using her. If you just listen to, there, there's no rationale in what's being said. So when, and I don't know if she said it, so I, let me, let me be clear that I don't know if she went on Twitter and did this or if they were just talking about. So Alyssa Milano decides uh, Atlanta is now a huge space for Hollywood type stuff. I have a friend there that's a producer and an actress and she's freaking amazing. Um, uh, she's actually my friend that I told you guys about that called me up and said, hey, <laughs> dude, would you like to do a TV show? And I said, frickin' yeah, I would. Um, <clears throat> and then she said, but what about Oprah Network? And then I called my wife and I'm like, I need a woman. <laughs> I don't know, I don't know things that Oprah fans would like. Um, but I said, my wife can lead the show and then I can just be the sidekick. I'd like that, that'd be fun. But the point was, so Alyssa Milano was very upset about what was going on with you know the pro-life things that are happening down south uh <clears throat> and i think that's what it was about but the, the point is think about making a public statement that until x thing changes i am going to do this which there's nothing inherently wrong with that liz milano is not who i want to pick on what i think is hilarious are the people that will then start arguing at each other if let me just run it by you like if you're pro-life Do you think any amount, and let's assume that I was pro-choice, right? I don't know what you are. I don't, I, I don't like to identify with overly simplified marketing terminology, which is exactly what both of those terms are. They were made by marketing people, right? And so if you're pro-life, do you think it makes any rational sense that I'm going to scream at you about all of my ideology and philosophy and belief systems that are pro-choice and tell, scream at you about how bigoted you are and how you don't care about women? Do you think that's actually going to have a change or are you behaving like a simple-minded, fearful animal who's scared to have someone out, someone that's not a part of your tribe because we're tribal creatures, we feel an irrational threat when we get around people that don't share our values, especially values that are that deep-seated. Do you think I'm going to have any effect on you screaming about how wrong you are? And but vice versa. Let's flip the script. Let's say you're pro-choice and I was pro-life. And I'm like, basically, you're just screaming to the people who agree with you. Because all you're doing to the other side of the argument is if there's only two sides. That's, that's the... That's the funny part to me, is that people think it's just two sides of this equation. <laughs> and it's, why are you on Twitter yelling about this? No. And then, like, if you're a comedian or if you're just saying something that you think is clever and funny, um, fine. But if you're legitimately trying to make a point and change thinking, uh, which I think Twitter is usually a bad place to do, because I've even been, I've even, like, put things out there that I think are interesting thoughts or, or things that I find weird. Uh, like, for example, I put out on Twitter, I really wish people on Facebook, uh, sellers on Facebook understood sales and understood how people buy things. And you could argue, like, who's going to read that? You're not help Like, I'm not saying it on Twitter because I think Facebook sellers are going to see it and then change their ways. I'm just, I am having an expression of a thought and typing it out on Twitter helps me to work through my thoughts. Right? So that's fine. But when you see two people screaming at each other about something, uh, I love what Neil deGrasse Tyson says when he says, if an argument ever goes more than five minutes, both people are wrong. <laughs> I thought that was genius. Uh, and so it's just very interesting. You see so much one-minded, th one-dimensional thinking, simple-minded thinking. And you see this in politicians, too. What makes it worse with politicians is that a lot of them actually know better than what's coming out of their mouths. And I know from experience working with or against depending on how you look at it because the politicians i used to have to deal with weren't too happy with some of the things that i was doing uh in the business that i was running but um you know they but they were fine that they went to bed every night not worrying about explosives blowing them up right because that was part of my job was keeping them safe <laughs> and so 
you know, it becomes a game of getting votes for constituents. I, I won't bore you with the story of what happened to me and why I was on C-SPAN. Many, many, I think that was like 2007. That was a long time ago. But the point is, you see politicians get very one-dimensional in the way that they talk. But the reason they do that is because they know their audience thinks that way. Right? And they know that stirring up conflict is a good way to get people involved in something so if we make if we make the race to the white house and the race to congress um you know the house and the senate and the, the if we make it a race like a football game like we're with the democrats and we're with the republicans and we're with the independents if we make it a fight people will take sides but i would argue that if you think anybody is just conservative or just liberal or just this or just that uh, Maybe, maybe there are people that are that, that are just all one thing, but my experience with human beings is that we're never always anything, right? We're a very nuanced creature. Let's see, if Avila, thank you for the follow on Twitch, I really appreciate that. So, but my point is, if you have that type of one dimensional thinking, and here's the best way I can sum it up, if you are incapable or unwilling to see somebody else's side of a discussion, you suffer from one dimensional thinking, period. You just do. Now, I mean, you could argue that there's certain, like going in the streets and murdering people is a bad idea, 100% of the time, right? Like no one's gonna, there's not two sides to that argument, right? Like no one wins with that behavior. So of course, there are outliers to what I'm saying, but in, in most things in life, there's not just this simple black and white answer that this is right and this is wrong and I'm gonna pick sides and I'm gonna yell and scream at everybody on the other side. Right? If you are incapable of seeing some, even the merit in somebody else believing what they believe, like if you can't even at least bring yourself to understand why someone might believe it, no matter how ridiculous, even if they're the person that thinks shooting people is a good idea, like at least get to the bottom. I mean, if, if you're going to have a conversation with them, like if you're just going to ignore them, ignore them, like most smart people do. But if you're going to engage in a debate with somebody, I don't remember who the famous person that said this was, but they said never get into a debate with someone until you can argue their point better than they can. Meaning you have to have a fundamental understanding of the root causes of what they believe. You have to have a fundamental willingness and ability to be open-minded, to say maybe I don't have all the facts. You know, someone laughed at me the other day. Oh, I think it was uh, Raz was actually uh, not laughing at me, but laughing at the fact that I said Buddhism was effective in a lot of things. You know, and she kind of laughed coming from a guy that's known as a Christian. Yeah. Some other religions have some things figured out that I think are pretty dope, right? Um, if you want to even call it a religion, I don't even really care for the term much. But, you know, if you're not open-minded enough to believe that some other, some other people came up with some stuff that was pretty smart, <laughs> then I don't know what to tell you. And I'll tell you, what I can tell you is that I observe a lot of people doing what I do and I observe a lot of people just in life period and there are people that are just set in their ways and very closed-minded and they're not open to the idea of even entertaining a discussion with someone they disagree with or something that they disagree with and if you want to really succeed now if you just want to kind of live comfortably get you a nice safe job by the way there's no such thing as a safe job I don't know if anyone ever told you that uh, and just kind of eke out an existence, then what I'm saying has nothing to do with you, right? But if, you, if you're coming on my live streams, come on, we know better than that. We know you're looking for better than that. And so what we have to do is that system that I told you about, that five-pillared system of absolute success, starting with self-awareness, if at any one of those steps you are struggling with one-dimensional thinking, you're not going to be able to see the perspective and make the necessary changes to change your outcomes, Right. By the way, outcomes is that fifth pillar, is the fifth part of the system. You're not going to be able to change the outcomes because you're not open-minded or, or teachable enough to understand that the closed-minded way you're looking at something is not effective. And it's not, it, you're not going to be able to see enough of the picture to be able to make the necessary changes. Right? Like if you're just married to, oh, I have to do my show like if you had a person who just swore they had to do a show on youtube i gotta be on youtube got but they don't really have any rationale for why or let's say they're like me they're better at talking than they are at being a showman on a camera talking to rhetorical people who may or may not be watching this right if you don't have the 
you know, I have the open mind and just be like, oh, maybe I should try podcasting because that's an arena where people can consume this passively. There's no expectation that what they're going to watch is going to be engaging. Just what they're going to hear is going to be engaging. Right? And so if I was closed minded, I could keep trying to trudge the YouTube world knowing that I'm not a video person. Like, I can make videos. I used to make comedy videos, too. But that's not what I'm in the business for. I'm in the business of sharing information that I know can change lives. Do I do some of that in video form? Absolutely. Absolutely. But a lot of the things that I would do in video form are like what I'm doing here. And a much smaller percentage of people want to sit around and listen to a guy talk for two hours if there's not something engaging and entertaining about what they're watching. They can certainly listen to it on a podcast. All right, so that said... Uh, let's take some comments and then I'll come back to the discussion. Raz says, I'm feeling frustrated. Uh, let's see, she's feeling frustrated with her current job, thinking about finding another source of income while she gets her dreams off the ground. Uh, excited to hear what you and Miko had to say about crappy jobs. Oh, yeah, that, today's podcast is definitely for you. Any advice you would give me that I won't find in the podcast? Um, no, not, not advice that I wouldn't probably rather have like a actual conversation with you on because I'd want to know more about what's specifically frustrating you what challenges are you running into and then what are your other options right so I, I would uh, the podcast is going to help you with some of the mindset stuff um, but in terms of like making a decision it's probably not going to help you do that so that's something we could talk about in the private Facebook group or, I mean, by all means, if you want to elaborate here, I'm happy to answer any questions that you have. Or, you know, what you could do is listen to the podcast and then the next time I do a live stream, you could just bring questions like, okay, here's actually what I'm dealing with. And then I might be able to hook you up. Just Dill says, do you think more intelligent people are more likely to engage in one dimensional thinking or just saying everyone? So everyone is susceptible to it. That's a Phenomenal question, Just Dill. Yes, everybody is susceptible to one-dimensional thinking. Everybody. Intelligence just exacerbates it because if you are smart and you know you're smart, then you kind of have a tendency, you, you're susceptible to a level of arrogance that, well, I've been doing this for 50 years. I know what I'm doing, Dad gum. It's like you're not open to new things because especially if your experience has led you to success. And one of the things that actually hurt me in my professional upbringing was I had a lot of success really early in my life. So when the tough times came, I didn't really know how to handle them because I'm so used to winning, I didn't even know what losing tasted like. And not that I didn't make mistakes and have losses. Sure I did, but I had some pretty heavy ones later in my career. I was just like, dang. I didn't know how to emotionally process not winning the Super Bowl every time I showed up to the game. <laughs> so I had to learn that, right? And so intelligence can make you more susceptible in some cases um, because remember we're just talking about intelligence not wisdom wisdom is you learn something and then you went out and learned through experience that it was right or it was true you got more perspective so wise people do not struggle with one-dimensional thinking that's why we call them wise intelligent people do all the time and I would say honestly intelligent people are probably more susceptible than people who like have a lower IQ or people who know less things is the way I'll say it because IQ I don't know how well a measure that is of one dimensional thinking or not but people who know a lot of things can think can get arrogant in their knowledge but that knowledge doesn't make them wise right it doesn't give them emotional intelligence it doesn't mean they know how like I had a guy tell me uh, in therapy we were do, was doing a group therapy session and he was just kind of he was giving me some love he was just like He's like, I, I don't know many cats who can read people the way you... He's like, you can feel what people are feeling when you're around them. And then when they're struggling, you can call out the thing that they're struggling with. He's like, just by looking at them, you can... He's like, I don't know. Like, how do you do that? <laughs> and I was like, well, I've dealt with a lot of pain. So I know what it looks like to me. You know, and I've dealt with a lot of people who have been hurt and stuff like that. So, uh, you know, that comes from wisdom. That comes from experience. Not just because I'm... Because, I mean, if you judged my intelligence based on how well I did in school, you'd have thought, he's not that bright. He doesn't do well in math. He sucks at science. And then I was a scientist when I went to college, which is hilarious. Right? So, intelligence, I just think, knowing a lot of things, um, I think it makes it worse. I'll give you a 
lovely example of how this went down in my life years ago at a conference and it was a military conference uh, it was a conference of military and war fighters and people supporting uh, the military uh, in business and I was watching two what you know in my former life they would have been called pencil pushers right laugh about one of the guys giving a presentation now one of the guys and th these are two people who stroke very very intelligent men who struggle with one-dimensional thinking and it been, while i was listening to them they didn't realize i was listening they didn't know who i was i'm it was just a regular guy at this conference and um immediately my thought process was these guys may know a lot of things but they're idiots and they're idiots because they don't seek to understand deeper than the understanding they already have. Like, they're really, really smart at one thing, whatever it is they do. Um, and they're judging this other person because they have no knowledge of what that life is even like. And I'm going to give you the details here in a second. I just want to get, uh, want to get some more music up on the scene here. So you guys, for Twitch. YouTube folks, you guys don't get the music. Only my Twitch family gets the music. All right, so uh, let's turn that down to taste. Let's get back to the chat. So I'm at the conference. I'm listening to these dudes. And the, the conference was actually over. And so everybody was walking out of the convention center. And uh, I hear these two dudes talking about one of the presenters. And they say, I don't remember all the details, but they were making fun of one of the presenters. And then they ended with... And, and he had cross arrows on his uniform, so you know he wasn't that bright. Ha <laughs> ha! And they were laughing. A bunch of pencil pushing scientists, clowns, were making fun of a special forces officer. And I'm thinking, have you ever been on the battlefield with some special forces operatives? Because I have. Have you ever seen how these men operate in their line of work when bullets are flying and shit is not going well and seeing the intelligence and the wisdom they navigate the space with to get a mission accomplished so in my mind and of course i'm biased because i'm you know i was never a special forces guy but i've had interaction with those guys i've trained with some i fought with some like it's i i i know that some of these dudes are my friends so i was pissed but at the same time my rational brain was like these guys are idiots they have no idea what they're talking about they sit in an office at the pentagon or wherever dumb place they work judging this dude who they're supposed to be helping on the ground and they think he's dumb because he's a grunt and i'm like these grunts you're making fun of are some of the smartest people i've ever met and I've, i'm a scientist and i've worked with these dumbass scientists that think they know everything that's one dimensional thinking and it's it will murder you. that's why those two scientists pencil push in some job they probably don't even really like while they're making fun of a guy who's lived the life of a freaking hero Arnold Schwarzenegger movie right so that that's what I'm getting at is if you struggle with that and a lot of people do a lot of people on YouTube a lot of people I work with on YouTube totally just close-minded to this idea that maybe there's more to this than what you know maybe there's more to this than what you realize right so that's what I'm saying there just to, let's switch over to uh, YouTube and then I'll come back to Twitch I know there's more comments Unwatchable says, I hate all the political nonsense. I agree with you. Adnan uh, Khalifa says, this sounds very interesting. I do fall a lot. Oh, you do fail a lot in real life things. I'm at best degree mediocre, sometimes good at doing stuff. But I've learned that trying to do things my way may bring some bad uh, experiences with the place and it's people I'm working with. I try to organize myself, but always maybe it's a personality thing. Um, but I believe that it's my only way to succeed, at least where I am in a third world country. So I decided to toughen myself up, conceal half of myself, and do what I have to do and simultaneously do things to find solutions to myself. Any advice? So yeah, I would say don't fall back on the personality type excuse that a lot of people use when they're just closed-minded and stubborn uh, or arrogant like people have to do things their way when there's other people showing you that there's and i'm not saying this is you just in general like when there's a proven way to do something but we think our way is right because we think we're so smart 
Uh, Michael Jordan is one of the best examples of this. The best basketball players ever lived on earth used to take advice from his teammates that he was better than because he knew that they could see things that he couldn't see. He was open-minded. He didn't struggle with one-dimensional thinking, right? So the challenge then becomes when you think your way is right all the time, that is not a personality trait. That is a character flaw that needs to be dealt with. There's an arrogance, there's, there's probably a hint of narcissism in there where you overvalue um, your cognitive ability. Um, but there's all kinds of, like I would study the cognitive biases because everyone is susceptible to the cognitive biases regardless of personality type. The way you get over cognitive biases is one, becoming aware that they exist, that they're in your brain for a reason because they've helped people survive for a long time, but we live in a very different world than when our brains evolved to behave that way. And so to get better, you have to be aware of them and then consciously practice, not like the certainty bias, for example, kills some, like a lot of this one dimensional thinking comes from people. I'm certain that what I say is right, that if you're pro whatever, you're a bigot. It's like, you're certain. <laughs> you're not even willing to have a conversation with the other person just to see where they're coming from, maybe just a taste. Right? And I'm not saying, you know, that's what I mean is that is not and I'll, i've seen a lot on youtube with personality type stuff like that oh because you're a flu guru lee or whatever that means you're more susceptible like show me that show me an actual legit scientific study peer-reviewed study where that's been proven you know what i mean like that that's where i i call the bullshit card and i tell people no you just need to grow up and stop falling back on oh it's just who i am well then change who you are because that's possible Right? It's another reason why I don't like a lot of the personality type stuff because people fall into these pigeonholes where they think that, oh, it's just the way I am. I'm just, oh, you're just an asshole and you're blaming your personality because I know a lot of people with that personality type who are amazing people. You're just an asshole. But fine, you're an asshole because it's your personality type, right? That's something that you want to avoid. All right, let's see. Uh, Unwashable says, I think you need therapy. Possibly. Uh, I like therapy. It's a good idea. <clears throat> James Mikey says, what happened to your gaming? As game reviews. Your reviews got me to buy two worlds and I have fun. Sweet. So uh, that all moved to Twitch. James moved to Twitch, James. It's all on Twitch. Twitch.tv slash Bryant Chambers. You can watch me play. Right now, in fact, tonight I'm going to have an after party uh, after this call on Twitch to play Arcania Gothic 4. I'm playing through that to get the 100% trophy because that's what one of the things my doctor told me. Getting on ass and doing something that's fun because I'm not always good at that, right? So I'm glad you enjoyed Two Worlds. I'd love to eventually get to play Two Worlds on Twitch, but I'm going to wait till I have a slightly bigger audience because I know how it works that that type of game is never going to draw an audience. And if I'm not going to do it for an audience, I can just play it by myself. <laughs> but if you, I am eventually, eventually, somehow going to carve out time on Twitch in the future. I don't know when this is going to be. But I'm going to carve out time to do game reviews on Twitch. Right? So I want to review Horizon Zero Dawn. That's on my list to review. I want to review, um, what was the game I finished before Horizon Zero Dawn? Near Automata. Woo! Best game I've played since Super Nintendo generation. Hands down, I've not played a better over all around game than Nier Automata since probably the Super Nintendo. Straight up. Now, it's also coming from a dude that hated Nintendo 64, PlayStation 1, and barely liked PlayStation 2, and liked like three games on the Dreamcast. So, take what I'm saying with a grain of salt. But yeah, that's still going on, man. Come on over to Twitch. I'm actually broadcasting on Twitch live right now. If you want to hit it up, follow me there, and then you're good to go. Will I ever bring that stuff back to YouTube? Eh. My podcast is in the future going to have one show a week about gaming and we're probably going to cover E3. Other than that, and I may put those on YouTube, maybe. Like the podcast episodes will go on YouTube eventually when I start filming them. But the gaming stuff will probably just stick to Twitch for now. Um, all right. Raz says, I feel what I'm doing isn't worth it anymore. I have outgrown it. And now I'm feeling life is holding me back. I love helping others, but it's way too much time around those who are full of it and are all simple-minded people. Uh, I want to leave, but I seem to get sucked into a black hole. 
it's been impossible so far to find someone outside the industry to give you a chance and your family wants to help but then laugh so i guess what it it is that second comment where the actual challenge is like you you are looking for other opportunities to serve but you're not finding a place that will hire you is that is that because i think we've talked about that even on one of our private coaching calls where i think you were looking for advice for like how can you go like mentor or apprentice under somebody is is where you live and i won't say it publicly on twitch <laughs> but is where you live like are those types of where you live like are those types of career is limited there is maybe your location making that tough Adnan says I'm not narcissistic so let me hold you there everybody is narcissistic I, I get that when I use the word narcissistic on the internet people get their feathers in a bunch like I'm not a narcissist yes we we all have narcissism every single one of us you don't necessarily have narcissistic personality disorder, but chances are if you didn't have any nar like a little bit of narcissism is actually healthy. It's just self-focus. Where it becomes negative narcissism is where it becomes you're overly focused on yourself. And that's not what I'm saying. I'm saying that in one category of your life, you may have, you may be out of balance when it comes to your self-view. That's all. I'm not saying you got a personality disorder, but let me read the rest of your comment. You was, but not anymore. You think more and you do less. Love artistic stuff. Yeah, so that, that's what I want to encourage you with. We all, like, I, if I give you a dark triad test right now, I guarantee you sh nobody should score a zero in narcissism. Everybody should have at least a little bit. Right? Uh, but when you're... And like I said, it may not be narcissism. It also could just be you've got too much of, um, you've got too much of a, um, you've got too many cognitive biases working in your brain that you need to eradicate. James Mikey says, "What is your Twitch channel? I'll do you one better, homie. I will link it to you." There you go, James. Enjoy, man. Raz says, yep, but I don't think that was me on in that call. Yeah, I, I re, a couple of you were talking about that stuff. You're right. I think it might have been uh, Syra. It's been difficult. Hey, James, thanks for the follow, man. Good to see you. Uh, it's been difficult to press on when my family can't understand that I'm trying to change for the better. So my advice to you on that one, Raz, is you're pulling a Joseph from the Bible where you're telling your family about your dream and then they're crapping on you like his brothers threw him in a ditch stop talking to them about it talk to people who have your back <laughs> believe me Raz says I find at least where I live they either want those with a master's degree or more experience huh so it sounds like the challenge then is if you wanted to do more in that area like you just don't have like you're going to have to either get more experience or go get a master's degree, which I know the master's degree is really not something you want to do. Um, but the, uh, so I think, I don't know. It, it's hard for me to advise you on a call like this where we can't actually talk. Um, but it, it, I think it really comes down to how, how long could you hack it before you can get what you're trying to do off the ground? Or could you go do something else? Like, I mean, you're a smart person. You have a lot of skills. You have a lot of people skills. You have a lot of skills. You have a lot of people skills. Like, is there something else you could do in another field for the time being that's still maybe helping people but not exactly doing, ex doing what you're doing right now? Which will make you happier but also pay your bills while you're, but also pay your bills while you build the other thing. Right? Because, yeah, in the field that I know you're in, that's tough because education is a is a bar of acceptance versus, you know, like there's no degree for running a business. <laughs> it was funny. One of my family members was like, do any of your clients ever ask for your resume? <laughs> I'm like, I haven't updated a resume. I'm like, what? No. Like, they don't want to know what college you went to. No. They want to know, can I help them make money? 
But where you are, that's tougher. And I, I respect that. How do you get experience with a chance? I think autocorrect got you. What were you trying to say there? I want to make sure I respond properly. Elu Manarg says, hey, brother, watching from the hospital. What? I'm just glad you're still with us, bro. I got the whole Facebook praying for you, man. Me too. Praying for your full recovery and healing, man. We got to get you right so you can go out. You can get in these trenches with me and help me save the world, bro. Need you out there. Unwashable says, okay, they're talking at now. Um, Lou Manark says, love out to all you Spartans and ninjas. Right on, man. Stay strong. Um, just know we're praying for you, brother. Get well. Don't overdo it. I know the military in you is saying F that. Sometimes even the war horse has to rest, man. <laughs> yeah, even some of my close friends are on my Facebook fan page too. Not a ton of them, but a good handful of people that I've been close with since I was a kid. And they were like, we got him, man. We're going to pray for this dude. We're going to get him right. Raz says, how do you get experience without someone to give you a chance? Well, that's just the thing. Like, right now, you have a chance. Like, you're in a place where they gave you a chance. But to move to the next level, like, what would you have to do to move up where you are? Get a degree? Okay, well, if that's not what you want to do, then you have to find another option. Then go into other places. If they're telling you the same thing, like, yeah, we'd love to give you a chance. But you either need to have this certification or this degree, blah, 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 blah then you just have to decide, okay, is this the field you want to stay in? Or like, you don't want to go to get a degree, and I don't blame you. That's a lot of money and debt to incur for probably not a big bump in pay, right? And a lot of extra effort that's probably not necessary for what you want to do, especially with your... I, I would just take it one day at a time. You're getting ready to be in a really intensive uh, training program, and I think you're going to get a ton out of that that's going to rejuvenate you in ways that your job doesn't right now. And it's going to introduce you to people that you can be working with and collaborating with. And I'm totally looking at YouTube when I should be looking at you here. Right? It's... That, that's... And I, I, I fully understand your pain because the real pain you're going through right now is humans are at their happiest when they feel they're making progress. And you feel like you're marking time. And I got that, but you're not. You're still young. You're not marking time in your education and your training. You're going out to get that training and education, right? So that you can make a way for yourself, right? And, or partner with other businesses. Like I literally had this thought today and maybe you can advise me because you have experience in that field. I was like, um, group counseling is awesome. I do it. And I started to think as our country, our, as our world evolves, like people with these advanced degrees and, and certifications are gonna become less and less necessary. Because what I said, what if we had like a, if we had a system where it was similar to group therapy, but instead of it being therapy or some type of medical practice where you have to have all these licensings, because it's for the insurance, it's all that that's for, right? And I mean, they want you to be smart and being able to diagnose people with mental disorders and whatnot. But I mean, anybody can read the DSM-5. Like, I can, like when I read through PTSD, I knew I had it. It wasn't like a, do like I had to get a doctor to tell me that so that I could, you know, get my military disability. But I knew I had it. I'm like, yeah, this, is, yeah, I totally have this. I totally go to the mall and look over my shoulder 50 times every 35 seconds, you know, waiting for someone to do something stupid, right? So, you know, hypervigilance is what they call that. In case you guys wonder what I'm talking about. But, um, the, what you've got to figure out. And so I thought about, okay, what if I started a quote unquote weekly meeting system, right? Where I have freelancers and entrepreneurs that need weekly, monthly, whatever it is, like group think sessions where they can come in, talk about the problem they're having. And then like a quote unquote certified uh, facilitator can come in and say, okay, have you thought about this for your business, that for your business? Or, Focusing specifically, like if we wanted to have a specific niche, what if we focus just on have, having them get their mindset right? Like just mindfulness and getting their mind right 
uh, and making sure their head's in the right space because if their head's not in the right space, your business isn't going to be in the right space, right? That's what this whole talk is about. If you keep failing, part of it's, it's all in here. That's what, like the thumbnail me pointing at my head. It's all between the ears, right? Which is affecting your feelings and then your decisions and then your actions, right? I literally thought, what if I could bring people on that had certain certifications so that we could prove the pedigree? Like I'm a certified facilitator, for example. Um, you're certified in what you do. Like if I had a team of people and I could run these weekly sessions, I said, if we had, <clears throat> if I could get enough people to where we could run, um, how many sessions? I can't remember how many sessions it was a day because you could charge like Netflix prices. <laughs> Or you could even charge like copay group therapy prices are cheaper and you can immediately have a half a million dollar a year job right or business that you're running with coaches and i thought about that and i, I thought about saying i wonder if raz be interested in doing something like that right so there are other options that may not be you have to have all these certifications but you may be particularly qualified with the knowledge you have to help do because you're getting ready to go through a coaching certification then you can coach entrepreneurs on headspace Right and mindset and mindfulness, which is I've found, the more the better I've gotten with meditation and mindfulness, something that comes natural to a lot of really successful people. I had to learn it, because I started my career being in a job where you don't have time to be mindful. I have time <laughs> to focus on the targets ahead, and I have to be ahead of my team and knowing where you know I have to always live in the future. Being mindful didn't come naturally to me. I had to figure that out, um, and you know get a lot of help to help me with it. So. Um, yeah, I thought, man, if I had, like, if I had a Raz and they could do eight sessions a day, 15 bucks a session per person, and if you had 10 people, which is about what you could handle in an hour long session, if everybody gets a couple minutes to talk, it's like you do eight of those sessions a day, every day for a year, that's basically half a million dollars, right? Or you charge whatever. But, like, that's how I want you to start thinking is how could you add tremendous value to people but build it into a system where it can actually bring you money. And then you solve the problem of not having the experience of the degree. I mean, you already know you want to go in a different direction. Right? And then the only thing you need is people to help you, you know, you know, or if I brought a person on to do that, then I would do the marketing or have one of my teammates do the marketing. But I thought about that. If Like next year, if I didn't want to get back into coaching myself, what if I brought a bunch of y'all? Because we have other people in our program that want to be coaches. I'm like, hell, some of y'all have, well, all of you have perspective that I don't have. If I had a bunch of coaches that I personally train, which I do, I could unleash you all onto the world and be like, I can help bring in the people by doing the marketing so that you guys can focus on doing what you love to do, right? And I'm, my role in life has always been I'm a leader of leaders. That's just what I am. It's in my DNA. Oh, I had a prophecy spoken over me at church one time when I was 20 or 19, All right? So something to think, that's kind of the brain, that's the headspace I want you to be in is trying to do it the traditional way is probably not going to work for you. So either temporarily change careers while you're building the other thing or just go hardcore on building the other thing but don't feel like you're not making progress when i know you're making progress because you went through my course which was intense guys that was 30 hours of your life intense doing assignments reading i don't know what did i give you guys like 10 books to read over the course of um nine months i mean that's huge so something to think about Captain Cheese says, hey, B, is there a, a SoundCloud page or something like that where I can listen to the music you made back in the day? No, there is not, my friend. There is a place, I think, to find like the rough drafts of my songs, like the really bad versions of them that I uploaded before I dropped the album. Uh, but it's not on any of the, like all, it used to be on everything. It used to be on iTunes and Spotify and blah, blah, blah. I took all that down because <laughs> I... I thought the product sucked. Like the heart was right, but the, the quality just wasn't where it should have been. Let's see. Raz also says there are jobs that will take your degree, but they won't even look at your resume because you lack experience. You're worried that you can't complete the program if you're so exhausted from the frustration of a current job. Starving looking for my next hit right now. LOL. If I move, will you hire me for that? <laughs> I'm done with this job. 
Maybe one day. Yeah. Never say never. Raz says, oh my God, I've been meditating le lately. My mind is full of dark. You'll be certified as a PCC and have the psych background. There you go. Right. There you go. I mean, that's, yeah. So that's something I'd like to do down the road. Right now I'm focused on the, my next biggest project, which is helping me be healthy first and foremost. And then down the road, I'm going to be helping these veterans. But then we'll get around to it. All right. <clears throat> Lou Manark says, I know it, drew tears. My man, nothing but love, dude. Adnan says, fun quiz, 10 seconds to answer after reading. You're in a car race. You cross the car in second place. Which place are you in? What do you mean by you crossed the car in second place? I mean, the answer to your question is you're in second place. Um... Because now he's in third. Uh, and then everyone else is saying, Queens Lee says second place, and Lou Manark says second place. And checking rooftops. Yep, I've done that before. And finding exits, sitting close to exits at conferences, just in case something goes down. All of that. <laughs> Congratulations, you win a respect gesture for me. <laughs> Sweet. <laughs> It's a good trick question, though, because your, your instinct is to say first place. That's a good one. I like that. All right, so yeah, guys, the, the bottom line is we, we've got to eradicate uh, one-dimensional thinking from our lives if we truly want to be successful. Um, I also brought YouTube here once again. I know I've been saying <laughs> my YouTube streams are going to be coming to a close, but I feel like I don't want to leave you guys hanging. I want to reach... Uh, now that my channel is starting to actually get negative subscribers, which is a good thing, it means that people are getting the message that we're going in a different direction. Uh, and they're letting us know that, yeah, we, we don't want to go in that direction, which I think is it's good for both of us. I don't ever want someone to be hitched to my wagon who's not getting something out of being on that wagon, right? I don't, I don't want to do that to somebody. I want someone to know what they're getting. Um... So I think that's awesome. Uh, it's a good thing. And um, I just wanted to make sure that I could reach the most of you possible to let you know that the podcast, the podcast, the podcast, I cannot stress enough that the podcast is so vital to me being able to continue reaching you and blessing you with um, just helpful information and knowledge that I'm learning. <clears throat> cool. All right. That's all I wanted to say to you guys. What are your questions? Before I go have my evening meal and then come back to play some Arcania. Who has questions for me? What do you got? Doesn't matter what you got. Doesn't have to be related to the topic. Unwatchable says, what do you think is the best way for a person to transform from one dimensional to multi-perspective mindset? Great, great freaking question. Before I address it, let me help. Uh, Dylan says, INFJ, I'm going to miss you very much. You don't have to miss me, man. I'm still here. <laughs> Just not on... I, I, I will be... I'll be back on YouTube once we start filming the... the. We'll do one real high-quality episode of the podcast a week. Like, not on the Nature Walks. Oh, by the way, that's one of the things I'm considering bringing to YouTube later. Maybe next year. When I'm not, you know, in, you know, dealing with doctors and all kinds of stuff like six days a week. Um... Is doing. I don't know if you guys know who Kevin Nealon is. You guys are a lot younger than the average bear. So, like Kevin Nealon's a great deal older than me. But I remember as a kid watching Saturday Night Live, and he was still one of the stars. His YouTube show gave me some ideas about how I might, like, the walks with my wife would make total sense doing them like, doing them on YouTube the way he does his show. Uh, I could see us doing that on YouTube. And then putting putting the podcast, taking the audio, making the podcast, and then taking the video and putting that on YouTube. But eventually, the podcast podcast will be filmed right here, uh, or hopefully I'm in my new space by then. Um, so we can make, make higher quality video. 
that's fun to watch. So think of like my podcast. The best way I'll be able to describe it is think the Joe Rogan show. That's exactly what we're going to model it after. Uh, or like Jocko Willink's Jocko podcast. That's textbook how we're going to do it and how I am doing it for the most part. Anyway, back to Unwatched. So yeah, Dylan, you don't have to miss me. I'm on Twitch uh, doing stuff like this. And I'm my podcast is going to have something new for you every single day, which is going to bless you way more than anything I ever did in the Myers-Briggs. I promise you. If And I tried a couple of times to take Myers-Briggs content and help you all kind of come on the journey with me to other, you know, deeper looks at psychology, deeper looks at personality, deeper looks at who you are as a person beyond just what we call personality. And it just didn't work. Like, it, it just didn't catch on. YouTube didn't show it to people. Or if they did show it to you, they took notes that you guys just didn't watch it because um, it wasn't what you were specifically looking for from me. And that's okay. That's totally fine. It's just, it's, if I could get you guys to look at some of that other content, uh, and I know it sounds like I'm begging, but it's, I, I know how beneficial it would be to you if you just took a look. And I, I don't want you to miss out on like, I mean, I have a ton of content that's on this YouTube channel right now that most of you ain't watching. Like my 69 Pillars of Success series, I'm like, that should be freaking mandated. I made my kids watch it. <laughs> like, you're watching this. This is going to help you in your life. Um, but anyway, back to Unwatchable. What do you think is the best way for a person to transform from a one-dimensional to a multi-perspective mindset? Uh, a lot of reading, especially reading things that stretch your mind, not only intelligence-wise, but things that challenge, uh, that challenge you. So, for example, I read quite a few books written by atheists, right? The Four by Dr. Professor, uh, Dr. Scott Galloway, I think he's a doctor. Uh, Happiness Hypothesis by uh, Dr. Jonathan Haidt. Um, the Selfish Gene by Dr. Richard Dawkins. And these are all guys that profess to be atheists. Um, Stephen Hawking's book, um, The a Brief History of Time. Now, I don't know that I would even call a lot of these men, other than the two of those I named, said out loud themselves that they were atheists. So I'm not assuming it. These are men that said it. In fact, Jonathan Haidt put it in his book when he said, religion's actually a good idea because religious people live longer than atheists like him. <laughs> he said, the science is out. People that believe in God are healthier, right? He's like, and he was saying that as an atheist. So read things that challenge you, right? If you have some very strong political views, listen to the listen to what the other side is saying, not listening to judge. Listen to understand. How could someone possibly be pro-choice or pro-life or whatever the thing is that you violently disagree with? Listen to why they feel that way. Listen to understand is the best thing I can tell you. And do everything you can to understand and combat the cognitive biases. Go look up cognitive biases on Wikipedia. There's a million of them. Uh, or you can look at, I have a video on my website. You can go to brianchambers.com and click on the 25 cognitive biases. There's videos I've shot. There's videos from Charlie Munger from his book where he covers the 25 cognitive biases that he thinks are the most important. Knowing those alone help you understand like, oh yeah, I do struggle with the certainty bias. Like, I think I'm absolutely right, but I've never really questioned it, right? <clears throat> so, for example, you get people in the church, in the biblical Christian world, it's, they think the earth is not billions of years old because the Bible said God made the earth in seven days, right? If you keep reading, there's also a scripture that says, to God, a day is a thousand years and a thousand years is a day. Now, I don't think that there's some people, well, then it's 7,000 years. No, like, Maybe, just maybe, they were being figurative. Maybe this person who's trying to understand an eternal life force of creativity with his limited, primitive human brain is trying to explain to you that this thing that we call God is not governed by time. Right? So it's like people get so closed-minded to listening to anybody because their little belief system... I'm like, but there's so much other evidence out there that says this probably wasn't seven days. This probably didn't start 3,000 years ago. Probably, right? I don't. I, the answer is I have no freaking clue, right? But digest things that challenge the way you think. Do things that make you uncomfortable. Like I surround myself with people way smarter than me, and they challenge me. All right, I want that. So that that's one of the best ways I do it. Queensley says, I went to college and university for social service, but I'm not happy with my jobs because I knew that I should be in communication. 
you're an INFP writer, got it. What do you suggest for switching to that area? So you've already got the degree, right? And I've hired a lot of people in my lifetime, not just in my business, but in other businesses that I've run. Uh, and even as an employee, I've hired people, right? So it's, <clears throat> I don't really care what your degree is if you can demonstrate that you can do the work. Like I hired, for example, one year, a new director of security uh, for the operation I was running at the billionaire's business, right? I probably spent 14 seconds or less reading his resume or caring whether or not he had a degree in um, criminal justice, which I don't think he did. Right, so I'm not worried about your degree. I'm wondering how can you prove to me that you're a good writer? And so if I'm wanting to switch to a career field of writing, if I'm in your shoes, I'm starting a blog, uh, a Medium, or a LinkedIn where I'm going to showcase my ability to write about things that I care about. And I'm going to find a way to get that in front of potential people that can bring me on board to help their business. All right, that's the way I'm going to do that. So, uh, and then more than anything, network, 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 net work. It's like the power of your network is everything. It's literally everything. There are meetings that I could walk into, you know, before my hiatus, where if I walked into it, I'm going to, like an, a meeting full of entrepreneurs where someone's going to meet me at the door, a friend of mine's going to meet me at the door and say, hey, yo, who do you need to meet today? Who do you need to do business with? Because I have a relate. I love this person and they have love for me, right? And it's there's a relationship there of people who are trying to do good in the world through our businesses. It's like, who do you need to meet? Who are you trying to, what do you want? What are you working on? You know what I mean? You got to have that type of network. You got to get out and start making friends with people who you can help, but can also help you. Dylan gives me the thumbs up. Appreciate that, homie. Adnan says, here's my opinion. Ask people questions and follow it up with a why or any other provocative question. Sure. Seek to understand. <clears throat> uh, Raz says from Twitch to Queens, Queensley. Read a book called The Power of Who. It'll help you get started on how to network. I like that. Thank you, Raz. Uh, Adnan says, Then I try to answer myself and disagree with myself. I don't find atheists around me, so I act like one. <laughs> cool. Yeah, when, when you don't have access to people, do it yourself. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, let's see. Lou Manark says, I used to do a lot of consulting, but I never charged for my services. We got to change that, man, and we will. Captain Cheese says, your YouTube followers must know that Twitch is a comfortable place. Uh, it is not necessary to download it, and it hits you up with an email when you are live, just like YouTube. I'm pretty sure some don't want to come to Twitch because they don't know that. I hope more come here. Yeah, me too. Well said, Cheese. Uh, and that's a good point to all my people on YouTube. Not only do you need to be subscribed to my podcast, Shameless Plug, I'm going to post a link to it again. This is the link to my website, but you can also get this on iTunes. You can get it on Google Play. You can get it on Spotify. Make sure that you're, because you're going to find two podcasts when you go to iTunes and search it. You want the one that does not have my face. You want the one that's just my Spartan mask logo. Um, but the podcast, but Twitch is also where I'm going to move these live talks. I'm going to do live talks in addition to my podcast on Twitch. On you know, Eventually I'll come up with a schedule when I'm not, like I said, in some type of medical or health thing six days a week or seven days a week sometimes. All right, so when I get my life back, I'll start doing a lot of that stuff. For now, I've just been kind of sporadically hanging out with you guys when I've had a little bit of free time. Um, <clears throat> so, yeah, and you're 100% right, Cheese. I think a lot of people don't realize getting on Twitch takes about 24 seconds, and then you just find my name and follow me. And Twitch is way better at sending you guys messages than YouTube is. Because YouTube's funky about... If you're subscribed and you press the stupid bell thing and it's like dude if they subscribe they want to hear from you what why do we have to have all these barriers uh, facebook does that too but you know facebook's algorithm is a whole separate monster and um 
yeah, Twitch is going to be a good place for you all to be, even if you're not into gaming. Not everything I do there is games. A lot of it is talks just like this. And eventually I'll stop doing them on YouTube altogether because, you know, like I've, I went from getting about 50 active people on these streams to about 10 because <laughs> a lot of people left the minute I stopped talking about Myers Briggs stuff. People are like, yep, not tuning into that crap. I'm out. <laughs> Which is cool, man. There's no beef. People got to do what they got to do. Do you agree that a man uh, can make a marriage good or bad for himself? Sure. Life is what you make it, after all. All right, what other questions do we have, friends? I think I may have found the secret to making a delicious dessert that is uh, keto diet friendly. I've been experimenting in the kitchen. There's zero added sugar. The only ingredient that gets added to it that's not a part of the foods that you mix together is salt and maybe Ah, Adnan says, Twitch, here I come. Thanks, Adnan, I appreciate that. I, by the way, YouTube, I recommend every single one of you still listening to this broadcast. First of all, go subscribe to my podcast uh, or pull it up on iTunes or Google, whatever type of phone you use, and then go to Twitch and follow me before I get ready to end the stream so that you can get... Twitch is going to send you an email and say, hey, you want to come check this out? No, no worries. YouTube, I have no idea. Like my business partner used to say, I get all your YouTube emails. I'm, like, I'm glad you do because I don't know who else. I don't even get them. Which I'm not supposed to get them. I'm the one broadcasting, but that's not true because I'm subscribed to myself from other channels that I own, so I don't know what's going on. So Raz says, is it gluten and dairy free? Gluten free, yes. Dairy free, no. Sorry. It is gluten free. So I, I feel like I have this perfect keto diet dessert that I'm gonna experiment with in the near future. I've been eating the components of it. And about, there's no added sugar, there's added salt, which is the, is the salt's the secret ingredient to the whole thing. But no added sugar, and there could be vanilla extract, right? Uh, but you don't have to have the vanilla extract. You can do without it. Raz says, I should rethink that. Do you or your wife create the recipe? You don't cook. I created this one. Believe it or not, I'm not a bad cook. I'm actually not bad at it. I just don't like doing it. <laughs> I'm actually okay at cooking. Pain Rain says, what do you think about afterlife? I think it's going to be awesome. For real. I do. Honestly, I believe that... Um, I think... I think some things in the Bible were, were literally someone being inspired by the creative energy that is God. Because when you read the first chapter in the book of Genesis, the command that is given to man from God, whether you believe that story really happened or it's a metaphor, it's not, not important. But the command, the first command God has ever given to man, forget about the Ten Commandments and all the law and all that stuff. The legit command he gave mankind was be fruitful, multiply, replenish, and subdue the earth. Right? Well, why are all why are there like so many planets and galaxies and universes i think it's because our calling is to expand i believe we were created to expand and i think earth is kind of the dress rehearsal <clears throat> for how it's going to look when we're set free from the mortality piece like even if people don't believe in any of that stuff i'm saying i do believe that humans are energy and when a person dies, I believe it's the law of conservation of energy dictates that that energy goes somewhere. So I may have my scientific laws amiss. It's been a while since I've had to dust off that part of my brain. Um, yes, I, so Raz, I created the recipe. Uh, like I said, I'm not a bad cook, yo. So yeah, I think the afterlife, I think we're living, I think we're doing a lot of the same things we're going to be doing in the afterlife. Like this whole... Whoever came up with the sitting on cloud while angels throw grapes and cheese into your mouth, which I'm sure the Greeks came up with that nonsense with their leisurely focused asses. They hated work so much. <laughs> I'm sure that was the Greeks. 
I came up with that BS. You know, which doesn't strike me as odd because the New Testament, the Bible's written in Greek, so there you go. Um, <clears throat> but yeah, I'm not a bad cook. I just hate doing it. There's a little echo. Well, we don't want that, do we? I forgot what caused that last time and how I fixed fixed it. Wait a minute. That's Twitch that's talking about the echo. Hmm. All right. Adnan says dairy for the win. Lou Manark says Twitch is hard to watch on my tablet. Interesting. I don't watch Twitch, so I don't know how hard it is to watch. Sometimes I'll pull it up on my phone if one of my sons is streaming. Unwatchable says for people that want to be productive but also maintain a healthy lifestyle, structured R. It looks like sent an unfinished question. No worries. I'll, I'll stand by for the question. Lou Manark says, I dropped a big thank you in the social media mastery group. Okay, cool, man. I'll be sure to check it out in the very near future. Adnan says, okay. Just Dill says, don't worry about it. It's faint. All right. <clears throat> Here is me not worrying about it. There's nothing I can do about it right now anyway because I have no idea what's causing it. All right, so we're waiting on unwashable for a question. Also, by the way, if you're not on my mailing list, you guys missed the shout out today that says my Good Life Playbook program officially launched. It is for, you can still get into the program. <clears throat> it is now 70% more expensive than it was had you bought it on Sunday when I made the announcement that we were going to launch it and that the price was going to go up to the right place so, price so that my accountant doesn't assassinate me for the insurance money. Uh, let's see. Unwashable says, how much free time should one put aside for outside work stuff? Well, it depends on what you mean by outside work stuff. <clears throat> and, it, and it more importantly depends on what outcomes are you driving for and what are these activities you're talking about. Captain Cheese says, I'm trying to read a Carl Jung book. I bought some months ago, but I'm not a good reader, and I think it's a difficult one. His books can be hard to read, yes. But what I have a hard time with is sitting down and reading. I just feel like wasting time, but at the same time, I know reading is good for me. Have you tried audio, like listening to the book instead of reading it? <clears throat> like get it on Audible? Just Dill says, you were right about energy, though... There are scientific laws about conservation of energy and mass, right? Oh, now I can hear the echo. What is that about? Oh, I wonder if my camera is also picking up. No, my camera's not picking up Jack. It's very weird. Hmm. Let's see. Hippie Mo says, hey B, what up? Glad I can make it. Just got back from work. Word up, man. Good to have you. Raz says, I unsubscribed because I always got double emails, so I felt like I was getting spam. Are you talking about from the mailing list? That's fine. I mean, you're in the private Facebook group, and you have my email address. <clears throat> and so, I mean, you're going to see all the stuff I post anyway. Queensley, thank you for the follow on Twitch, milady. Welcome. Yeah, so a bunch of people subscribe to my mailing list in different places, and I segment the lists. So if I send a message to multiple lists, it's not smart enough to filter you out. <clears throat> I try not to. I have. I kind of binge when I email. Like I'll have times where I send a lot of emails, but then. Other times, I'll go months sometimes without sending an email to my mailing list. Yeah, 
Captain G says, hmm, if I'm not engaged visually, it's hard for me to concentrate except music. So I would get lost with an audiobook, sadly. Okay. So you're a visual learner, then you may you may be better off learning from like interviews, videos, and podcasts, or like video casts then. <clears throat> Porter Reed says, I'm looking to have an open-minded conversation with someone, but I know it's going to be rough. I'm more than willing to listen to different points of view, but I fear mine will be considered silly or disregarded immediately. Okay. Chi says, I want Brian's take. I... I don't have a take. He didn't ask me a question. <laughs> he just told me he's... So, what, ask me, do you have a question? Like, I feel your pain in what you're saying. And I'm not trying to make light of what you're saying. I'm with you, man. Uh, what's your question related to that, though? Like, how can I help you with that? Puerto Rico says, I know it wasn't a question. Well, I'm just looking at Cheese like, yo, I can't wait for Brian to respond. Like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what to say. Um, I mean, I, I could give you advice that says, uh, yeah, no, of course, Puerto Rico, 100%. I'm, trust me, dude, I'm, we're, we're right here. That's me and you. Uh, I mean, my advice is, are you going into the conversation to get your point heard or are you going into the conversation to see, like, always seek to understand before you wish to be understood and is it ask yourself is it mandatory for the other person to understand where you're coming from or to be willing to listen i mean sometimes people just aren't willing to listen you know and if that's the case is it a conversation you have to have if it's not going to actually be a conversation it's just going to be someone dumping their beliefs on you with no willingness to listen to your stuff why do you have to have the conversation <clears throat> Adnan says, I downloaded the podcast, but still didn't listen because I've been busy doing nothing. <laughs> oh, well, in due time, man. In due time. Uh, Illuman Ark says, I know that the love of our community is what lifted me from the danger zone. I might still have Angie. Okay. Gotcha. Yeah, keep me posted, man. Queensley says, do you believe in the law of attraction? You know, I've never heard anybody actually, like, give a succinct definition. I've heard a lot, watched a lot of videos and heard people talk about the quote-unquote law of attraction. How would you define it? Like, in a one-sentence definition, how would you define law of attraction? And then I think that's a good place to start as to whether or not I believe in it. I must become a creative, or Unwatchable says, I must become a creative mecca. And never sleep to achieve my goal, but I feel I'm not ready to make the jump. If I fail, I'll be unhappy. Okay, so a couple of things. Uh, not sleeping means you're going to be dead. So you're not going to have any goals if you're dead, so that's not going to work. Um, but <clears throat> define what failing is to you. Because I don't understand how you working for something, how do you define failure? Porter Reed says good points across the board. Got it. It's actually a good book on that too called Crucial Conversations. That might help you too. Uh, Captain Chi says that's the take I wanted to hear. <laughs> Kyle Sully says, do you have any strategy systems that accompany your reading to get what you need out of the books you were reading. Yeah, so one of the things I do is I come and talk to you guys about stuff I learned. So if you've read um, Peter Drucker's Managing Oneself, he talks about it's imperative that we learn how we learn. So Captain Cheese just outed that he doesn't, he doesn't learn well by reading or listening. So I'm imagining he probably reads by talking too. So one of the things I'll do is I'll read the book, but then I'll teach on it. Because then it solidifies it in my brain. Porter Reed says, you answered the question without me having to ask it. Sweet, man. Of 
Queensley says, exactly, Loom. I'm still new to it, but from what I understand, it's attracting what we want in our lives by asking. Yeah, so law of attraction, the secret. I'm not into that part of it. Like the, I'm just going to dream about a dump truck full of billions of dollars pulling up to my house. And then a dump truck full of... And it's funny because the secret was taken from an older book back in the day that I'm sure I haven't read it. Or have I? Did I read that book? Because a lot of these books that are old, that newer authors take all the work out of them and then just tell you the fun parts. Like, just dream it. And then they, the naked bikini models show. But you can't be naked and a bikini model. So that's a bad example. But a lot of that stuff is, is interesting. It's fun to listen to. But I'm also not saying it's not rooted in truth. But much like my description of network marketing or pyramid schemes, they leave out the work part. <clears throat> they just, they do, they teach you all the fun stuff like dreaming and meditating. Yeah, all of that's really important. But then if I don't then go out and actually do something, the dump truck's not just going to show up at my house because I wanted it really bad and I believed hard enough, but I didn't put anything out. Right. Let's see. Oh, I know what the frickin' Echo is. Man, stupid YouTube. There, Echo's dead. Sorry. So my headset is picking up what's happening on my PC and pushing that through on Twitch. Right, YouTube, you're not hearing any of this. YouTube was playing in the background without the mute on, so you were hearing a delayed version of me talking. It's over. Got it. Thanks for the catch. Uh, thanks for the catch, Just Dill. I appreciate it. Captain Cheese says, that's why your videos are so, so helpful for me, besides the great quality. I can watch you. I know it sounds weird, but no, no, dude, I trust me, I get it. Totally get it. I'm a weird, I'm weird like that too, where I can watch a video description of, like, one of Tony Robbins' books, there's a YouTube version of it, and just looking at that, it's helpful. Uh, even though the only thing that's happening on the screen is like a picture of a clouds moving through the sky or something silly like that but yeah no i totally get it little raz says my favorite so far has been you are a badass by jen sincero uh it was a real and hilarious it was good and her you're a badass at making money is not a bad book either it's pretty decent just dill no biggie glad i could help all right <clears throat> Yeah, so Queensley, I do think there is merit to visualizing what you want to happen, right? Like, I tell people all the time, I have physically, in my mind, been to the farm that I'm working to build. Right? I've been in the house, I've smelled the wood, I've been in my office with the two-story bookshelf, right? It's full of a library full of books that I can encourage people to read and get smarter and, and you know, encourage my kids with. Uh... That I I totally believe that that's a good idea, but where most where stuff like the secret, because I didn't read the book, but I watched. There's a Amazon Prime has the video version of it, and it has a lot of you know respected teachers that are out there in the world that do teach good stuff. So I'm not trying to crap on it. It's just it was very much kind of mystical and fun versus okay now that you had the dream and you had the vision. What am I actually going to now do today to make that come to pass? How am I going to give enough value out into the world and to people? You know, I quoted that scripture on a call. I don't remember what video I said it in, but there's an ancient scripture that says, Give and it will be given unto you, pressed down, shaken together, running over, shall men, or women, they use men generically back then, <laughs> shall men give into your bosom, right? So it's very much, <clears throat> instead of waiting for the universe to bring you something, People are going to bring you the thing you want. So if you want that to happen, you got to go out and serve people. That's where the secret gets stupid to me. Where it's just ask the universe. Yes, ask the universe, then get ass off couch and start giving value to as many people as you can. Because that has a funny way of the universe bringing it back to you. And the universe, by the way, is just a cute way to say God for progressive people and folks that don't believe in God. It's not as offensive. Because how is it any different? Like you're praying to the universe. And come on. What are we doing out here? <laughs> what are we doing? Huh. 
Okay, let's see. Cool. All right, any more questions? Any more questions? What questions do you have for me? Raz says, I had someone ask me why I use the word universe when I'm a Christian. Glad I'm not the only one who's been asked that. <clears throat> Let's see. Right. I know Twitch heard me give last call for questions because Twitch is not really on a big delay. YouTube is usually on a bigger delay. What are your questions, guys? Let's go. Let's get them in there. Otherwise, I'm going to bounce and then come back to Twitch to play some Arcania, which you should, guys should totally come hang out and watch that, too. I'd love to have you. I'm really close to the end of the game, too, so you get to see me beat the game on the hardest difficulty. Which, when you're good at the game, is actually not terribly difficult. There's some fights that are hard, but when you've beaten the game as many times as I have, it's, you kind of know how to work the system. Wrong Peach says, Hey, Brian, I have a friend that wants to be a freelancer, but she's not sure where to start. Do you think your Good Life Playbook program can help her? 1,000% yes. Absolutely yes, it can. 100%. Um... Just to give you an idea, like it, it's written on the website, but <clears throat> one of the one of the last courses we taught in that program, um, or the last course we taught in the program, talked about the five pillars of absolute success, right? And so, part of that system is self awareness, and then we have a separate thing that we teach called the five pillars of self awareness, right? All of that is in there to help each individual person find who they are, right? Not just personality tests, that's a part of it. But really understanding what makes you you, what drives you to want to be a freelancer, right? What are the underlying parts of you and your psyche and your emotions and your values that drive that? Because with that type of self-awareness, it gets so much easier to start wading through, okay, what do I do? I don't know where to start. Well, you start with you. You start with what's a problem that you have that you think a lot of other people may have that you are particularly skilled to solve, or even better, a problem that you had that you overcame that you could help, you know, a hundred, a thousand, a million other people solve, right? And to the degree you can pick a solution to a problem that's significant enough in the lives of other people that helps you establish yourself as an authority. <clears throat> one of the other things we help with too is helping people figure out, okay, uh, one, one thing I see entrepreneurial spirited people struggle with and freelancers too is I've got all these ideas, how do I narrow down? Well, it's okay. Maybe you don't have to quite narrow down in the conventional sense that I just have to pick one thing and stick to it. There's ways to experiment with different things, right? So we walk everyone through how to do that, but then we give practical advice uh, in the videos, you'll see that I have uh, people that want to start businesses for the first time who've got this great idea, but you know everything they're talking about is going to cost way more, way more money than they have access to, right? And I, I never like to see people go into debt for something that, like, if they haven't proven that they can build something or at the very least run something once it's built and financed then I'd rather you experiment with your money <laughs> than take the bank's money or an investor's money um, and, and, and with no experience go out there and completely uh, not be able to operate. And so those are some of the things that I'm working younger entrepreneurs through, which is, and younger I mean just as inexperience, the age really doesn't matter. It's very much, like if you've never been an operator before, there's gonna be a lot of trial and error and learning you know, and there's people who've already done what you're doing, so it's like, okay, let me hook you up. One of the ladies that in the program just emailed me today because she finished going through the last videos, and she talked about how it helped her because she went out and got a mentor in her field, 
like I could mentor her to a point because I had some experience in that field. But what I told her in the program was, you need to get someone flesh and blood that you can talk to and touch. That that's in the game right now because she's a musician and I used to be. But it's get someone that's in the game right now who can help you go through the bumps and the bruises. And by the way, the music industry has changed supremely uh, since I was doing anything, right? And so now my computer's being weird. So I guess the music's over. <laughs> All right, so yeah, there's there's a ton of things in there. And then that's just the Good Life playbook, right? But then there's all the bonus content. There's the 69 Pillars of Success, which many of you have already been through. There's a whole other course, like a college-level course on marketing and sales, right? Two separate courses. There's the marketing course, then the sales course, right? Eventually, there's some other business courses that I'm going to release just to the group, just to the Good Life Playbook group that nobody's seen except some people that were a part of that coaching program back in the day when it existed. Um, you know, there's how to be more, con there's how to have more confidence starting from a place of self-awareness. So there's a lot of building blocks that are going to build her, not only as a freelancer, but or her or he, I think you said she, right? Yeah, there's a lot of things that are going to build her as a person. Because if she's the strongest version of herself, whatever she's doing as a freelancer is only going to benefit. So, yes, I would say without any hesitation that it would be beneficial to anybody who really wants to get hit the ground running. Then, hopefully before Christmas, I'm going to be releasing another program called the Soldierpreneur Startup Kit, which is showing uh, military personnel and first responders how to go from the military and like fire department or police officer and and then move into a freelancing career or starting a business more like an entrepreneur where you have a business that's bigger than you right and so that course is going to be something that folks have access to also so we're also looking at adding more value to the program doing more uh i have personally been a lot more involved in sending things to people in the program who are active that i know what they're doing like hey you need to check this out hey I, wanted, I have a couple people in the program that are entertainers, one who's a comedian, and I know his style. He's also on my team. <laughs> but I've been sending him, check out this comedian, look at how he does this, look at how he does that, right? Learn from these folks. So, yeah. Uh-oh, Raz is rolling her eyes about Taylor Swift. So yeah, a hundred percent, Ron Peach. I appreciate you asking. I think she would definitely benefit from it. And ha having asked that, do you do you have access to where she can request access to it? Um, I want to make sure uh, if someone is actually interested in it, they know how to request access so that I can email them and start the conversation. And I'll wait for you to respond and then we'll go from there. And then everyone else, if you still have questions, go ahead and get them out. I'm actually trying to get something squared away on my, uh, where is it? That is not it. Ah, there it is. Nope, dag nabbit. <laughs> Good to go. <clears throat> All right, let's come back to Twitch and chat. Make sure everybody's good. All right, looks like everybody on Twitch is squared away. Hopefully we didn't lose Peach. I hope that was a good answer for her. And Peach, by the way, uh, little Raz here is actually in the program. <laughs> so she's very, she's saying, absolutely. She's actually one of the folks in the program.
So she is speaking from experience. Let's see, Captain G says, I'm off for today. I'm going to watch a pillar of success before sleep and start the day in the best way possible. Have a nice one, everyone, and thanks for the stream, B. Awesome cheese. Thanks for coming, man. Adnan says, uh, did you... Oh, it looks like uh, Mike's rolling out, too. Adnan says, did you experience something like you get something and then you don't feel the pleasure of getting it because you realize that there's something wrong about it or how you got it. No, so what you're dealing with is actually uh, documented as uh, part of that is the contrast bias. That's why you guys got to study the, the cognitive biases, right? Um, humans are never, like, nothing you ever desire is as pleasurable as you think it's going to be and nothing you fear is ever as painful as you think it's going to be, right? It's all in the mind. And so what you realize when you actually accomplish something or get it, it's never quite as good as you imagined. And what you realize is that the joy is actually in the journey and in the making progress. And I realized, Twitch, that my screen just froze. So that's awesome. Let's see, Wrong Peach says, she doesn't know about it. I just thought I'd ask for her because she told me she wants to be a freelancer. But to answer your question, I have the link to the webpage. I'll just send it a link. So just to make sure, oh, I see what happened. My screen and my computer froze. So I want to make sure you have the right link. Um, but now my computer's frozen, so I can't do that. <laughs> so yeah, just whichever link you have, just have her do the request access. Um, one of the web pages has the wrong information because the price has gone up, but that's okay. We can um, we can work with that. Yeah, if you want to send her the link, or if you just want to send her my. E my email address, she can just email me directly and ask me questions about it. I'm happy to do that too. Uh, let's see. <clears throat> Lumine and Arc says, B, showing you how to be the best you so you can be the best you to help those you wish to serve. Word up. Uh, that's coming from another person who's in the program. <laughs> Adnan says, if so, then that means you might have realized that it's that thing you wanted to get or do, not good for you. Kira H says, hello, Bryant and everyone. Hello, Kira. Good to see you. Always a pleasure. Alex Light says, hey, I saw this live stream even though INFP wasn't in the title. <laughs> Sweet. That means you probably watched one of my last videos. And so YouTube has decided, well then, let him see another one. Yeah, I don't know if you guys realize this about social media. You, you actually train social media you actually teach social media how to treat you. You actually teach it what to show you. So you can totally control. Like if you wanted to see my stuff all the time, just go to my channel every day and click on something. And it'll keep showing you stuff from me. If you don't do that, <clears throat> you'll see something else. At least on, that's YouTube. Facebook's very much about your engagement. So if you like something from somebody, you're going to see their stuff more often. Same with Instagram. Sarah says, how to give your dreams to God and then also make goals. My life is nowhere close to what I thought 10 years ago, so it almost seems pointless to set goals. What do you think? Thank you so much. So, Sarah, most of the time when I see people are disappointed in goal setting, um, <laughs> Raz says social media is a creepy-ass stalker. That's actually not far from the truth. Uh, Sarah, what I typically see with people in goal setting uh, and that's actually one of the pillars of our absolute success uh, model, too. What I typically see is people aren't setting actionable, achievable goals, right? So people say, I want to be a millionaire or I want to be a billionaire before I'm 30. Okay, that's a cool dream, but that's not really a goal. It's not a realistic goal, right? I believe the best way to set goals is to set goals that are doable, but that help you get to your dream, right? So let's say your goal is to become a billionaire. Well, you know you're gonna have to serve lots of people before you can get to that point. All right, so let's say you sell a product, but you eventually wanna sell a billion dollars worth of a hundred dollar product, right? So that's a lot of product that you have to push. So instead of setting the goal, 
has, I want to sell a billion dollars worth of this product, you set the goal at how many people do I need to sell this to? You know, how many people do I have to show that this is going to serve them well if they buy it to make a million dollars? All right, figure out that number. <clears throat> and by the way, it's 10,000. Uh, <laughs> I think if it's $100 a pop, you're going to have to sell, um, what? You're gonna to have to sell 10 million of them to make a billion, I think is the right number. So you're gonna to have to sell 10 million of this. You're gonna to to sell this product either to 10 million people or sell it enough times so that it sells like McDonald's. It sells billions and billions of hamburgers, All right? But instead of setting your goal, I wanna be a billionaire, you set your goal to, well, how many people have to buy this for me to make a billion bucks? Well, then it's 10 million people have to buy it. Well, I know the law of 2.5% dictates that only about that many people at the end of the day are really going to buy whatever they see from me. So that means now if I want 10 million people to buy it, or maybe you want a million people to buy it 10 times or whatever it is, then let's say you have to get in front of a million people. Well, then you got to talk to, um, you got to talk to, I think it's, if you wanted a million people to buy from you, I think the laws would dictate that you now need to reach out to 40 million of them. So you would need to reach, your goal needs to be, I'm going to reach out and touch 40 million people. Once you do that, you'll be very much closer to being a billionaire or something more practical, right? Like you want to make $100,000 a year. Uh, you provide a service that is a thousand bucks a month, right? You do like consulting or, you know, you do a thing for someone that's a thousand bucks a month. Well, you know, you need 100 clients to get to 100,000 a year, right? 100 clients every month paying you 1,000, or I'm sorry, you need um, 10 clients every month paying you that $1,000 to get to 100,000 a year, right? So if that's the case, then it's, okay, you don't make your goal, I want to make a million, I want to make 100,000 a year, or I want to make 10,000 a month, or I want to get 10 clients, the, 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 the hope is that you get 10 clients, but you set the goal in order to get 10 clients, I need to reach out to roughly about 400 people. Because out of 400 people, about 10 of them will say yes to me, you know, the law of 2.5%. So usually with goals, people get discouraged because they set goals that just are either not realistic or they're just not setting goals in a way that's achievable. So you know you could reach out to 400 people probably 10 of those people will do business with you, right? If you're good. So make your goal. I'm going to reach out to 400 people in the next three months. Like next 90 days, I'm going to, I'm going to reach out on LinkedIn or wherever I do my business to 400 people. And then theoretically about 10 of them will become your clients. And there you go. Next thing you know, you're making a hundred thousand bucks a year. <clears throat> Pain reigns. A simple question. What do you think about physical pain? I think it hurts. And it looks like I have control of my computer back. <laughs> so if uh, wrong Peach is still here, uh, now that my computer's back online. Uh, Peach, I just posted the link uh, that, they, that folks should be using for the program. So that's the one. Uh, Geeky Boy says, Brian, a question of mine is how do you determine how to choose where to go to college? I don't know that I can answer that for you, brother. Um, there's so many different factors that there's, there's personal things that I don't know about you to tell you how to make that decision, right? Um, like my decision was based upon first, which one of these colleges will accept the scholarship that the army gave me, <laughs> right? Um, but I think you, you just need to figure out what are the criteria. Like one, start with what do you want to study? And does the college you want to go to, are they particularly good? It was like the first thing I would look at if I had to choose where to go now is what, what is it I want to do when I get out of college? Like what do I want college to do for me? I'm going to start with the end in mind. Like what do I want to be doing because I went to college? And let's say it's you want to be a computer programmer. Okay, cool. Uh, what colleges that are on your list of potential options turn out the most computer scientists, right, who actually get jobs in that field doing well? What percentage? 
Like that's a factor. I want to go to a place that places people. And a lot of that has to do with how good is the college's network, not just how good are they at teaching you computer science, right? Because I'm going to tell you guys, you know, about 90% of my hiring decision when I hire somebody in anything is whether or not I like the person. And that's my number's high, like nine. Like I want, I want loyal people who I like being around is my first thing that I care about. Like I want people who are loyal and believe in my mission, but then I also want to like being around you. Then we'll talk about your resume because the way I treat it, uh, like in a business, I am happy to give somebody a job they may not be fully qualified to do, as long as they're capable and then they show me that they're willing to grow into that job. I think they're gonna come in and hustle their ass off to figure out how to be the best at that or take classes or do whatever it is they have to do right quickly right so I'm a little bit different in the way that I hire but a lot of colleges that are good at placing people have a good network they have relationships with the hiring managers so it's like hey I got this kid he's a whiz kid that person's more likely to get hired than just someone getting a cold interview through submitting a resume to Indeed so that's kind of where I would start, but you know, I don't know what your desires are. Like, do you want to go to a party school? Like, there's too many factors about you that I don't know to be able to advise you properly. It's a good question, though. Let's see, Putri says, "Hey everyone, I am new here. I am curious of your thoughts about." Pygmalion effect. Do you think it's more like a placebo effect? I need to look that up again because I forgot what that means. It's what happens when you start trying to learn a lot of things. You start forgetting stuff too. Pygmalion effect or the Rosenthal effect is a phenomenon whereby others' expectations of a target person affect the target person's performance. Um, the effect is named after the Greek myth of Pygmalion, sculptor who fell in love. Ah, yeah, the sculptor that fell in love with the statue he carved. Or alternatively, after the Rosenthal and Jacobson study. So, basically, you perform as well as people expect you to. Uh, well, I think that can certainly go beyond just placebo effect in that if someone is projecting on you something that they believe about you and then you begin to accept that belief, especially if it's a limiting belief or even a positive belief, like someone showing that they truly believe in you, um, that can actually motivate you to better believe in yourself, thus perform better. And likewise, if someone's constantly putting you down and talking about how bad you are, the minute you start believing those press clippings, that belief, because the one thing we don't like to do as humans is go against what we believe in our course. If you believe, if someone's able to convince you that you're bad at something, you're going to eventually start performing badly, even if you're technically not bad because you don't want to be, you know, your subconscious doesn't want to be in conflict with what it believes. That's a really interesting question. Pain Rain says, I hate how some people really undersell pain when they don't know they couldn't get where they are without those pains. And personally, I have learned a lot from you. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Lou Manark says he's death sparring partner. I know pain. And yes, he does. Renee Jane says, hi, Brian. Hope you are enjoying. I feel like trapped in something. Oh, no. I don't want you to feel trapped. Uh, Sarah says, thank you for your help, Brian and Adnan. Yeah. Yeah. So I would just, I would take a look at the types of goals you're setting. And if you're setting those arbitrary goals that I know a lot of people do, I want to be a billionaire before I'm 30. Like, okay. Very few people do that. I hope you have a real, I hope you have the next Facebook. <laughs> That's what you're trying to do. Right. Geeky Boy says, funny enough, I do want to be a computer scientist. Well, there you go, geeks. There you go. All right, any last minute questions before I get up out of here? Last call for questions, y'all. Uh, 
Uh, Vin AJ says, can't differentiate whether it's fear or laziness. So I didn't understand what you were talking about there, but if I had to just guess on somebody's life, whether they were just fearful or lazy, I'm always going to err on the side of fear. I don't think very many people are lazy. I think very many people have a life and goals that do not inspire them. I don't think laziness is ever a problem. I think laziness is the result of having a lack of proper desires. I think laziness is a symptom, not something you're choosing to be. <clears throat> Adnan says, hold on, I type slowly. Okay, I'll hold on. Vinay Jane says, thanks a lot. Yeah, no worries, man, no worries. Uh, Matthew Selva says, is MBTI more of a utility or a means of entertainment? I think it's both. Uh, I think the internet has turned it into very much the same thing as horoscopes. Uh, and then they've tried to back up that thesis with things like cognitive biases and things that are, you know, pretty smart, pretty well thought out. Um, I, I think it can be a pretty good utility uh, if used appropriately. I think, I really don't think there's any real issues with the Myers-Briggs test. I think the bigger issues come with the way people use it. As if because you're a fill-in-the-blank personality type, this is the job you should have. When I can find outliers and exceptions to that i can find exceptions to that rule every time where it's like you can't just pigeonhole somebody you need to really get to know the person and you need to get to know them beyond their four letter code to understand their value system right because your values are always going to direct like career decisions way more certainly the fact that i am highly extroverted right means i'm probably not going to want to sit in a desk job i'll be really bored and i'll have anxiety so there's some truth to but you know, I, there's other tests that measure extroversion in a way that doesn't just say you're introverted or extroverted. It just measures how extroverted you are, right? So yeah, I'm a pretty big, I'm pretty high in extroversion if you study, if you measure me in that. So yeah, there's some assumptions you can make about me, but I still like isolation and reading and a lot of things that gets attributed to introverts, right? But the, there's other tests that measure extroversion and they break it out into different things. Like my extroversion is very strong in social confidence, right? Things like that. So, yeah, I, I think it can very much be a utility. I, I, I still believe that what the, what the Myers-Briggs is best suited to do in the short term, and it needs to be supplemented with a lot of other psychological study and study of self beyond just a typing system. Like, I think we're going to eventually evolve out of this typing crap. I, I think the ship has sailed on trying to put people into boxes. Uh, and I think there's better tests that don't do that. Tests that actually measure things versus saying you're either this or that. <clears throat> right? Because human, I mean, the human beings, we evolve. Right? Emotionally, cognitively. Um... All of those things. So what the one thing I think uh, what Carl Jung really focused on, I think that knowing a lot of that information can help you with is knowing how you process information, like the intuitor versus sensor piece. I think there's some I think there's some validity there. Um, and I think how you make decisions, think thinking versus feeling. Right. Do you make objective based decisions? Do you prefer objective based decisions or people based decisions, right? And it's going to be situationally dependent. There are times where the biggest feeler in the world can make an it can make an object based or an outcome based decision. And what I see a lot of people doing with Myers Briggs is they start pigeonholing things like, "Oh, because you're a feeler, fill in the blank." And it's like you can find at least a thousand if not a million exceptions to that rule. And it's just not healthy when you start when you start using the test to separate yourself from people instead of better understand yourself and how you think that's where i think it becomes more entertainment and more i, I think it's become a lot like uh horoscopes where people are trying to use it as like a dating tool it's like i'll never date a blah 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 because blah, because you had one bad experience right yeah you knew two people with that personality type which you didn't measure their narcissism, Machiavellianism, or psychopathy. Like you've dated two psychopaths, which is probably because you have issues with self-worth, which are not tied to your Myers-Briggs type. So that's where when people start asking me dating questions, I'm just like, nope, I'm not even, no, absolutely not. Like, don't date until you get smarter about how people work. That's, that's my advice to people trying to use Myers-Briggs for that crap. 
Because when you're squared away, and I'm going to tell you straight up from my own personal experience and the experience of other people in like successful, happy marriages, when you're squared away, personality conflicts don't wreck a relationship. Let me just put that out there for everybody. When you're squared away and good, personality conflicts, when you don't struggle with being a narcissist and you don't struggle with being inflexible, right? When you can be wrong and see it from someone else's perspective, which is the whole point of this talk tonight, when you're squared away, personality conflicts don't end relationships. I think that's the most ludicrous thing on the planet, that we're trying to predict relationships based on your freaking star sign. It's, it's beyond ridiculous. You know, and I don't judge a lot of things, but that's, it's, I've been married a long time, happily. And there's a lot of other books that'll help you build relationships that have nothing to do with, you know, your four letter code that are much, like I said, get smarter before you start dating is what I'd say to people. Adnan says, why do you want to help people? Uh, because a lot of people have helped me and I feel it's my obligation to pay that forward. And I've experienced a lot of pain that is, I've experienced a lot of suffering. I shouldn't say pain because pain can be useful. I've experienced a lot of suffering that if I can help people avoid, that's a good thing. <clears throat> wait, wait a minute, you said you type slow. It took you that long to type those four words? <laughs> Let's see. Mia Diva says, hey, Brian, I'm pretty new here. So what do you suggest? Which books, videos to get me more up to speed on the road to success? I've heard you mention a Myers test. Where to learn about that? Do you not think that these testing measurements can some way lead to casting people into a type? Can it become limiting? It's absolutely limiting. That's why I don't do it. Because it, it's ludicrous to try to boil somebody down into a cognitive function and that this cognitive function is going to predict everything they're going to do and it's going to predict whether or not you're compatible with them and blah 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 it's, it reminds me of all those people i used to know a lot of women who were into horoscopes and they would try to break me down Ooh, look he's being it like yeah but there's lots of other people who are that <laughs> that aren't my star sign like that's not like, I get that there is a correlation. Like, coincidentally, I happen to be this thing you're talking about. Kind of. I happen to be that today. Tomorrow, I could be different, right? So, yeah, I think it can very much be limiting. Um, you know, if, uh, all success, Mia, this is what I'll tell you. All success starts with self-awareness. Period. Uh, and that's been documented in books. You know, the first book I saw that in was Sun Tzu's The Art of War, which I think was written, what, in the when when was Sun Tzu? I'm bad with dates, but very long, many many thousand years ago, <laughs> Sun Tzu wrote wrote that that all your success that you want starts with first of all knowing who you are, where you're going, what your values are, and the more self aware you can be. Uh, I think self awareness does can start with personality testing. But I think that's just kind of the tip of the iceberg because it's very hard to break down an ever-evolving mind, a mind that's always being bombarded with data and, and information and ideas and feelings and, you know, all these different things that the mind has to process. And we're, we're still, you know, learning how the mind works and mapping it <clears throat> in science. So it's, you know, I think personality testing is one part of a person. But it's one of five very important parts. And I, I think v knowing your values is a really a better place to start than knowing your quote-unquote personality. Because your values are always going to shape your decision-making. Regardless of what your personality type is. Even if your personality type is wired to go this way. If your values dictate that you must go this way. can almost guarantee you every time your value system. Like the, it, it's going to override that. You know, like think about the most passive, never heard a fly person in the world, but you attack something that they care about and then they can become a warrior. Right? I saw that happen. It was like the school bully was beating up on this kid and the shy kid comes out of nowhere and starts defending him and beating the other kid up. You know, because his values, he's like, I'm watching the kid suffer and I know what that feels like. I don't want him to feel this. 
So even though I might be introverted and passive, in that moment I'm throwing hands, right? <clears throat> Adnan says, what do you think if someone helps people and feel unhappy after that? Is it because their intentions were selfish? I honestly don't know the answer to that. I'd have to talk to that person a little bit more and understand more about... Um, I don't know that their intentions were selfish, but maybe they, their expectations weren't realistic. <laughs> Vinay says it's thinking, which is taking time, not typing. <laughs> yeah, I was just teasing. It's fine. All right, let's see. Raz and Geeky Boy. Okay, it looks like I answered everybody's questions. Hey, Vinay, are you on the uh, spectrum for autism? And if that's too pride of a, of a question, feel free not to answer. Uh, and that's in response to the question you just asked me. And if you don't know, you might want to uh, get tested. Yeah, you may want to, based on what you're saying, if I'm understanding what you're saying here, you don't understand emotions at all. Um, you can't process them properly. I wonder if there's, um, I wonder if you do have, um, if you're on the spectrum for autism. That is something I would probably look into. Again, if I'm understanding you properly. So Just Dill says, how do you set goals? So I I just explained that to Sarah. Everything I said to Sarah a couple minutes ago, Just Dill applies to you. You set goals that, it's not just about being realistic. It's about setting goals that you actually can do, right? Like, so you don't set a goal that says, I'm going to make $6 billion in the next year. Okay. But I would only set that as a goal if I had a, like, if I had a proven means to make that volume of money then I could set that as a goal then that's doable because I've proven that like if I've made six billion dollars before I could probably set that goal because I've learned how to make six billion dollars um, but you want to start with goals that are things that you can act basically you want to start with goals that you can actually control right like don't set a goal to make six billion or to make a million dollars set a goal to reach out and give some type of value to X amount of people because you can control that part Okay, Just Dill says I got pulled away from it. Yeah, but that that was the summary, Dill. You're good. Queensley says, I'm off to bed. Good night, everyone, and cannot wait to listen to your podcast tomorrow. Awesome, Queensley. Thank you so much. All right, people, I'm up out of here. I'll be back in a couple of minutes, uh, probably about 10, 15 minutes to start playing Arcania on Twitch here with you guys. So for those of you that will stick around, it'll be great. For those of you that won't, that are going to bed, enjoy your rest. It's been a pleasure to serve you. Do not forget, podcast, 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 podcast. I cannot say it enough. Bryant Chambers Movement is the name of the podcast. You want the one that's the picture of my Spartan helmet, not the picture of my face. Until I get iTunes and Google to remove those and Spotify to remove that. You're going to be dealing with two podcasts, but it's the one without my face. Or if you can't remember that, just look at both podcasts and look at which one has more stuff. <laughs> look at look at the one that has a video from the day you're on versus the one that has videos from like three years ago or whatever. Um, so yeah, do that. Get on the podcast. Get on Twitch, YouTube, fa YouTube family. If you're not already on Twitch, get there. Um, Let's see, Sarah says, journaling, praying, and asking God helps me with clarity, with my motivations, asking him to help me be pure of heart. Peace. 
Putri says, great answers, Brian. Have a good night, everyone. Yeah. So, uh, like I said, if you're still interested in my Good Life Playbook coaching program, it's totally still available, but unfortunately, you missed the 70% discount. And as you can see from a number of the people here that I've coached over the years, uh, it's I can I can tell you without hesitation, it's worth 10 times what we charge for it. And I've built it that way on purpose. So, love you guys dearly. Never forget that. Remember that we are stronger than I. And I will see y'all YouTube. I don't know if or when I'll be back here, whenever, because YouTube. But definitely get on Twitch. Definitely get to the podcast. Love you guys.